Hi everybody, Craig Wilkins back here with you with another edition of The Daily Pause, a devotional of positivity and encouragement for Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. I pray that you not only have a very blessed day today, but that today's devotional will also serve as an encouragement, a motivation, and an inspiration for you and put a smile on your face as well. If you enjoy The Daily Pause, please hit that like button down below wherever you're watching and feel free to share this devotional with anyone that you know that might be blessed by it. Also, check out more episodes of The Daily Pause on my Facebook page, The Daily Pause, my YouTube channel, Greg Wilkins, or follow me on Twitter or X, depending on your preference, at Greg Wilkins 78 There you can leave comments. You can also submit songs that you'd like to see featured as a part of devotional. And including, you can also send in some encouraging words of your own, either in note form or in video form. I would love to see you guys send in some videos of you speaking about some encouraging words or some encouraging motivational things that you want to share with everybody on this devotional. You can do so by also leaving them down in the comment section below or reach out to me on Facebook Messenger by email at glwilkins78 at outlook.com or text me at 864-860-1522. I hope everybody is having a very blessed Tuesday and I thank you for watching this episode of The Daily Pause. And always remember that God loves you, God cares for you, and God will always be there for you. Let's get started with today's devotional entitled Perfect Security. And this was brought to mind by a song uh, in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s that I heard James Hall and Worship and Praise is a choir up in Brooklyn. He has a song called Perfect Security. And I was listening to this the other day and it brought this to my heart and mind. So I wanted to share this devotional with you. It's not about that song, though. It's about our children and how children have an uncanny and unbelievable, never ending sense of energy, curiosity, adventure, um, questions. They'll ask you questions about any and everything. Sometimes the same question 10,000 times, but that's just the, that's just the strength in our little children. And I remember finally when, uh, my next, the youngest, my middle nephew Mason was born and the time that my brother Reggie and my sister-in-law Jennifer would take the time to strap him into his car seat and, and all that fun stuff. And whenever we would go for it, a walk or just go somewhere we're going somewhere we got to cross a busy parking lot or busy street either one of us either me or or reggie or jennifer or whomever whatever adult was with him would grab his hand and say all right stay with me i don't want you to run out and trap trap and get hurt he said okay so he'll grab our hand or our finger and he'll hold on and he'll keep on he'll walking with us but he always had that sense of curiosity just and i would spend time with him and lots of lots of time especially when he was younger he's 11 now i think he's 11 yeah and and he would always want to fight dinosaurs everywhere, whether it be in the Grand Canyon, whether it be on Jupiter. He always had that sense of adventure. He had no fear about him always. And young people have that, that, that sense of no fear. There's bold when they just bold and just boldly ask any question they, they feel they can ask and they just go do crazy things. And three year olds get this crazy sense of, you know what? I can make that jump from the top of the dresser to those pillows over there and I can make it without a flaw and they'll go and try to do it and they may not find a way to easily get up on that dresser but they'll find a way to get up there and they'll try to jump and we as adults have learned to see the danger and things like that and everything we are around we always have a heightened sense of, of alert and sometimes it's to our, our, our best of our ability sometimes it's to our detriment because sometimes we overthink sometimes but we just want the people around us to be safe particularly our children particularly the children who apparently have no fear about anything hurting them they don't care about getting hurt until they get hurt but then once they're hurt they want to run to somebody that know they can fix it so they they're hurt and scrape their knee or they hurt their elbow or they scratch their face they go run to their uncle to their father to their mother to their grand to nana to papa to whomever is closest to them and they just want comfort they run into their arms and they just 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 don't want to let go until they feel better and then when they're better they're off doing crazy things again but i want to focus on that part about children knowing where to run to get the security they need when they they know after a while that if you're, if you're coming to a street 
they need to grab an adult's hand to help them securely get across the street. If they fall and hurt themselves, they run to a parent, they run to a grandparent, they run to an aunt, they run to an uncle, or to an older sibling if they're, if they, or who, whoever's there is older that could give them some security, some peace, and some remedy to help them fight their problem. Or if they're in the middle of a big thunderstorm and a big clap of thunder and some lightning flashes and it scares them half to death, and we as adults sometimes get scared about that too. They run towards somebody in the, in the, or they run to a safe place. How many children have, do we know that build forts and, or have tree houses or have a safe a place of safety they run into then whenever they feel afraid of something, they go to there and they're safe, their home base. They are not leaving until they feel secure enough to leave. And sometimes it's a parent's arms. Sometimes it's a fort they built out of pillows. Sometimes it's a tree house they built. Sometimes it's hiding in the closet. They go to a place in which they feel safe until they can understand that safety is around them or they trust the person who is giving them that assurance that everything's okay. You could trust me. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. That level of security doesn't go away when we're older. It's just that we as adults sometimes forget who we can trust because we get cynical with age. We get less trusting with age. And you know, we, we always hear the phrase, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I mentioned the golden rule, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. But I also mentioned Fred Sanford, given his version of the golden rule is that, that do it unto others before they could do it unto you, or you might get done in do it, doing it. And that was his way of being cynical. Don't trust anybody. I also talked about Stone Cold Steve Austin, WWE Hall of Fame wrestler, whose mountain mantra in his existence in the WWE was DTA. Don't trust anybody. And that comes from a lack of security. That comes from a lack of sense of peace. That comes from a lack of not being sure who you can trust around you. And when children get into those positions of being hurt or being fearful, they want to trust the people around them whether it be parents, grandparents, godparents, nieces, nephews, other cousins, other older siblings, aunts, uncles, police officers, firemen, teachers, uh, whomever, whomever is around them that's still supposed to be in charge of looking after their well-being. They want to be able to trust them, to be able to be secure in them. And us as adults, we lost that as we've grown up. But I want to encourage you that we still do have a place of safety. We still have still do have a place of refuge in Jesus Christ. And we can learn from children. We can learn a couple of things. We can learn, learn one that, oh, one, we need to be bold in what we do. Two, we need to ask questions. Three, we also need to be more careful of who we trust. Sometimes we take that a little too far. We end up not trusting anybody. We put up those walls and then not realizing the walls we put up not only keep ourselves from being hurt, but it keeps those from loving us who can encourage us and comfort us from getting to us. So we got to be careful to that extent. But in the midst of putting up those walls to try to put up our safe places like those kids with the forts, Jesus gives us that assurance of security in him, of peace in him. He tells us that he, the name, the Bible tells us Proverbs 8 and 10, 18 and 10, excuse me, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run into it and are safe. It also tells us in Psalms 23 that he is a shepherd. We don't have to want for anything. He leads us beside still waters. He leads us in the green pastures. Those are places of peace and solidarity and security, just tranquilness and peace. We find that in him. He'll restore our soul. He'll lead us in paths of righteousness. And though we may find ourselves in adverse situations, those valleys of, of, of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear it because he's with us. He is with us. Even when we're surrounded by frenemies or enemies or whoever, he's there with us. And he prepares that table for us, even in their presence. They can't do anything to us because we are covered by his blood. We are covered by his shadow. We are covered by him. We have perfect security in him. And that not only, only provides us a place of safety in a physical sense, but in a mental sense, because we can't go anywhere past what we can think. And if we don't think we're safe, we could be surrounded by military and barbed wire and electric fences and have a place to be stored in a room with no windows and four feet foot thick titanium walls. And you got to know four different passcodes to get through the door. But if we don't think we're safe, we won't be. And that's the assurance we get through God. And that's the perfect security that we get through Jesus Christ. He assures us 
that he not only will keep us, that he won't leave us in the midst of it. He won't forsake us in the midst of it, even, when, even though we look like we're going through hell. So the old saying is that if you're going through hell, keep going. If I stay in the, in the message you're in or the message you're experiencing, keep on forging forward, knowing that God will carry us through it. It's that old, that old poem about the set of footprints. The reason we only, the reason why we only see one set of footprints is because God is carrying us through those troubling times, through those scary moments, through those storms in which we feel we have no place to run. So we put up those walls, that fort and try to keep ourselves safe. But the Lord is trying to tell us, Hey, I got you. I got your back. I've always had your back. You don't have to worry about a thing. I didn't lie. I can't lie. I won't lie. I never will lie. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you every step of the way. No matter how difficult things seem, no matter how troubling things get, I am there. I am there with you. Just trust me. Trust me even when you can't sense me. Trust me when you can't sense, feel me. Trust me when nothing around you makes sense. Continue to trust him. Continue to praise him. Continue to worship him. He is there. And what, through our praise and our worship, we get that sense of relief in our mind. And that gives us the per perfect security of knowing that his presence is all around us. Today's feature song is a beautiful hymn written probably around 1904, 1905 by Jesse Bain Wilson, not Jesse, Jenny Bain Wilson. And the music was written by Franklin L. Island back in 1905. Name of the hymn is Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. The first hymn, the first verse tells it that life is filled with swift transitions. None on earth unmoved can stand. So we got a whole, we got, we, we got some things that we got to, that we're going to go through and they go through, come at us like this. Boom, 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 boom. One thing happens. All of a sudden, we're trying to get used to that. Then boom, something else happens. And it just keeps moving. Life is filled with those types of movements. And we all go through them. But one thing that does not change is God's hand. God's hand will stabilize us. God's hand will keep us covered. God's hand will keep us focus. That's why the chorus tells us to build our hopes on things eternal. We can have a, a we can have the best security system around in the world. But if our internet, if our internet coverage goes down, uh oh, we're vulnerable. We could build the best fort in the world, but if it's made of wood, it'll be set to fire. Any kind of explosive, if strong enough, could blow it up. So those things can change. Those things could change. Those things could change. People can change, but the Lord will never change. He is the Lord. He does not change. He changes not. His love doesn't change for us. His compassion doesn't change for us. His faithfulness towards us doesn't change. Therefore, we need to build our hopes on those things eternal, not here on earth, and hold on to God's unchanging hand through everything we go through. Trust in Him. Believe in Him. He'll lead us and direct us in the right way when we trust in Him. And we will get that perfect security to help us do and be what He's called us to be. Even if that does mean hunting dinosaurs on Jupiter. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness that you told, you showed to us every day. We thank you for letting us know that you haven't changed. You won't change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because you do not change, we could trust in you even when our lives go haywire. When even when our lives are all right, we will trust you and we will hold on to you. We will cling to you when things go wrong, when things go upside down, when we get afraid. We know that there's no, we can find our strength in you. We can find our comfort in you. We can find our joy in you. So Lord, let us hold on to you even closer as things around us change, as things around us go upside down, as things go awry. Let us cling closer to you because all the variables around us will change, but you don't. We thank you and we praise you for that. In Jesus name, amen. This is the part of our devotional in which we have our birthday and anniversary shout outs. On day, we want to wish a happy birthday to William Foster. Happy birthday to a couple of people I went to college with. Happy birthday to June Clark and happy birthday to Melissa McAllister. Melissa, June and William, happy birthday to you all. May God bless you with many more birthdays and enjoy your birthday on today. Also want to give a shout out to a happy 19th wedding anniversary to Bishop Thomas and First Lady Shirella, Shire 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 forgive me, Shirella Lee. Thomas and Shirella, happy anniversary to you both. May God continue to bless you and cover you with his love as you experience the love that you have with each other for these past 19 years and many more to come. 
Now, once again, to send in your birthday or anniversary shout outs to be shouted out here on the Daily Pause. And I, as I promised, I did better than I did yesterday. <laughs> All right, just send those in the comment section down below or reach out to me on Facebook Messenger by email at glwilkins78 at outlook.com or text them to me at 864 860 1522. As well as any encouraging words that you would like to send in to be used as a part of the Daily Pause devotional. Now that's going to do it for today's edition of the Daily Pause Devotional. I pray that it's a blessing to you and an encouragement for you. That that's like children seek refuge and safety in us. Let us learn from that lesson how they seek the, their safety from their parents. And let's seek safety, the perfect safety and the perfect security from our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. Continue to love each other. Continue to be safe. And remember, every day there is always time to take a pause. And Lord willing, I will see you again on tomorrow. Enjoy today's feature song, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand, written by Jenny Bain Wilson and Franklin L. Island in 1904 and 5, respectively. And it's performed by H.B. Charles Jr., who is the pastor and teacher at the Shiloh Metropolitan Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. This was recorded in 2018 off the album Songs, Hymns, and Spiritual Songs, released by UMAG slash Shiloh recorded lab labeling group. And I hope it's a blessing to you. I hope it's an encouragement to you. And I hope it just gives puts a smile on your face knowing that you can find perfect security in Jesus Christ. May God continue to cover you, keep you, and increase you in all that you do say and think on today and thank you for watching this edition of the daily pause devotional take care god bless and i love you all today's feature song starts right now hold to god's unchanging hand performed by h p h b excuse me h b charles jr enjoy and god bless While you're singing, it'll help you sing if you put your hands together. Yeah.